Today we are going to walk through the steps to inspect, maintain, service, and upgrade our scythe chopper pump. Before we begin, you will need the following tools to disassemble and reassemble the pump. In addition, please take time to practice safety measures such as using cut level 4 gloves, safety glasses, and steel toed shoes. Before disassembling your pump, check for any structural cracks. With your pump sitting level on the ground, loosen and remove each of the bolts connecting the volute and seal plate. Using a hoist, lift the driver assembly straight out of the volute shell assembly. You may need to tap the volute to loosen the seal between the components. Lay the driver down on its side. You may want to place a wedge on either side to keep it from rolling. Using an extension, remove the impeller from the driver by removing the impeller bolt and washer. You may need to use a crowbar to help separate the impeller from the driver. Once the impeller has been separated from the driver, Remove the impeller key and set aside with the impeller bolt and washer. Next, we will remove the striker plate from the volute by removing all of the striker plate bolts. Once the bolts are removed, use a screwdriver to help separate the striker plate from the volute. Remove the existing shims from the volute. Anytime you remove the impeller, you will need to reshim the striker plate. We will walk through this process in a few minutes. Now that your pump is completely disassembled, you can begin the process of reassembly. Whether you are maintenancing a scythe chopper or converting a SH non clog to a chopper, you will follow the same steps moving forward. To begin reassembly, place the impeller key in the slot at the end of the driver shaft. Once the key is in place, you can slide the impeller onto the shaft. To secure the impeller onto the shaft, apply Loctite to the impeller bolt and refasten the bolt and washer through the impeller to the shaft. You will need to use a 10 mm socket wrench and torque the bolt to 45 foot-pounds. You may need a crowbar to hold the impeller in place while torquing. Before reconnecting the volute, prep the rotating surfaces by wiping off the impeller blade and wear ring inside the volute. To place the driver onto the volute, use the lifting handle to hoist the driver and impeller assembly upwards and align them so they are hanging above the volute. Slowly lower the driver and impeller into the volute. As the design of this chopper requires very tight clearances between the slicer assembly and volute wear ring, it may be necessary to tilt the driver so that it slides perfectly into the volute. Apply Loctite to the 12mm volute bolts and using a star pattern, tighten them into the volute using a 10mm socket wrench and torque to 35 foot-pounds. In order to assemble the remaining chopper components, the pump must be propped so there is a downward force on the impeller. This will bring all components to their lowest natural position. This is a good time to make sure that your impeller freely spins. If your impeller is not spinning, there may be an item lodged between the volute and wear ring. If this is the case, disassemble and thoroughly wipe down both surfaces. At this point, we are preparing to shim the volute and striker plate. For most accurate shimming, remove the o-ring from the striker plate. Place the plate on the volute and measure the distance between the two components. This measurement will be your starting point as you begin to reshim the pump. The distance between the striker plate and the volute will be the distance you need to fill in order to accurately shim the pump. Begin adding shims to the striker plate, stacking them with equal amounts on each side. 
You can start with shims, adding up to the distance you initially measured between the striker plate and the volute. You will continue to add shims until the clearance between the cutter components is between 1 and 8 thousandths. Using 4 of the 10 millimeter bolts, hand tighten the striker plate to the volute using an 8 millimeter socket. Never use a power tool during the shimming process. At this point, make sure the impeller still spins. If it doesn't, you may have an object stuck between the blades, between the blades and the wear ring, or a shim could have slipped and be interfering. Now we are going to measure the clearance between the blades. The clearance needs to be between one and eight thousandths. You can measure this using a feeler gauge. If you don't have a feeler gauge, you can use the shims in your shim kit as reference. The red shim is two thousandths and the brown shim has a height of ten thousandths. If a brown shim fits between the blades, your gap is too large. If the red shim fits, your impeller should spin and your blades are within the necessary clearance range. If the clearance between the blades is not within the acceptable range, remove the bolts and striker plate and add or remove shims. Then reattach and remeasure using the same process until the acceptable clearance is achieved. Once you have the proper gap between the blades, remove the striker plate again and apply the o-ring. Put the striker plate back on the volute with the final shim stack. Use four bolts to loosely hold the striker plate in place. Apply Loctite to the remaining striker plate bolts and loosely tighten them in a star pattern with the heads of the bolts sticking out just past the plate. Once all bolts are loosely inserted, tighten the bolts by hand to 35 foot-pounds. This may be difficult due to the resistance created by the o-ring. Watch the center gap of the plate and blade. If the gap grows, you have over-tightened the plate. If this occurs, simply loosen the bolts and retighten. The flexibility of the plate and blades allows for these components to be resistant to damage and breaking in even the most demanding applications. Once all bolts have been tightened, double check the clearance between the blades and check again that your impeller spins. With just a few tools, a hoist, and a chuck bed, you can easily service, repair, or upgrade a scythe chopper pump. This ease of serviceability is just one of the many benefits of the scythe chopper portfolio by Barnes. To learn more about the scythe chopper, visit scythechopper.cranepumps.com.